We're planting winter squash today in a variety of different ways. And later on, Holly's going to make some homemade salad dressing to serve with that leaf lettuce you're harvesting out of your garden. All that and a whole lot more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. This program was funded by the following. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com, what could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151 acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting food to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. This show is dedicated to the average gardener, simple home living, and using what you already have. Well, we're going to plant some winter squash, and there's a difference. There's a couple of different types of squash. There's winter squash, and there's summer squash. The winter squash is the viney type in most cases, and the summer squash is the bush type. So what we have here is we've got a little cage constructed of these are the bottoms of baby cribs that people have thrown out that I've picked up and we're going to use it for our spaghetti squash and our butter nut squash and we're going to kind of corral it so it doesn't sprawl all over the garden. So it's very simple with the spaghetti squash. If you've never had spaghetti squash the term is because when you slice the fruit open or the vegetable open it's looks similar to a butternut squash but the inside is all stringy like wads of spaghetti and you can eat it raw or you can cook it as a pasta dish and it tastes very nice so we've started these seeds inside uh, about a month ago uh, three weeks to four weeks ago just to get a jump start and we're just planting them directly in the ground and with these squash you want to plant them as deep as they are in the container that you get them from. Some nurseries will also have starts available, but if you can start them from seed, as you can see they've kind of started to get a little root bound, so I'm just going to very gently tease the roots, otherwise the roots will continue to grow in that, ro in that circular uh, direction. So I'm going to plant two on the inside here, and you want to be very gentle with these because the stalks are still fragile and these will vine up and the premise is to kind of corral it and then as the fruit bears it'll hang from the top and the sides and wherever it wants to go and we may have to train it a little bit to get uh, to get it to where we want it to go so those two are planted we'll plant this one out here and this is just another uh, you know to grow on the outside and try to get it to grow up and those roots I'm just going to tease again just a little bit and the butternut squash or the spaghetti squash will get to maximum size about three to five pounds depending on conditions and temperature and water so we've got those planted we're going to come to the other side 
and we're gonna plant our one acorn squash on the outside, and then we're gonna plant some butternut seeds on the inside and along the back. Now, all the squash that we're planting today will take anywhere from 80 to 110 days to get to maturity. The acorn squash here will get to a maturity in 80 days, and it bears resemblance to an acorn that you would find on an oak tree. It will get to about three to five pounds again to, at whenever it's ready to harvest. So now we got, we're gonna do a little something different here. We're gonna take some butter nut seeds here and we're going to plant just slightly below the soil, the top of the soil here. I'm gonna go three on that side and I'm gonna go one, two, three. Now with the butter nut seeds or with the butternut, you can store them and we have in the basement for over a year. It's really recommended about eight, six to eight months is about the maximum, but we have managed to store them over a year. Tasted just fine. They're really good on the grill as well. So we've got those planted. We'll water those in uh, once we get all these planted. So we're planting our buttercup squash here. And then that will take about 95 days. Now, one of the ways you can plant it, you could just plant it in the ground, let it sprawl all over your garden, or you can trellis it. Now this is the trellis off of our peas that we, uh, this we actually found this, somebody was throwing it out. So we're going to maximize it and use it for our buttercup squash and, it can, and can kind of consolidate it and allow it to grow up. Now the buttercup will, it looks like a peanut butter cup whenever it gets mature. It's going to be about three to five pounds with a flat top, flat bottom, and it's going to be a green, this will be a green uh, color in skin. Uh, again, we planted these about three to four weeks ago. I'm just going to tease the roots. Now on this one, I mounded the soil up just to elevate it so it's uh, a little easier for these guys to really get started and get a hold of the trellis. So I've got three different plants here, two in one, one in the other. Also, when we work this soil, the best fertilizer you can mix with squash or any vegetable is compost but if you're limited on compost you can always use a very good organic fertilizer and we recommend Winchester Gardens they have a very good line of organic fertilizer for the home gardener so that's what we uh, applied the recommended amount that was on the back of the package in each one of these areas that we're playing the squash still you want to be very gentle with the squash because they are tender until they get hardened up the stalks and these will grow vertically and produce a lot of good buttercup squash. So let's go over here and we're gonna plant some Hubbard green squash and some dumpling squash. So with the Hubbard green Hubbard squash and the dumpling squash, we're gonna plant in a giant mound, kinda of like you would if you did potatoes. And this is just so uh, the soil will stay warm, we can water it and any excess water can run around the, tr uh, the outside and soak in the bottom. Now the green Hubbard squash, we're just going to plant these just like the other ones. These will take 110, 100 days to reach maturity, and they'll get between 8 to 12 pounds. They're very nutritious, very tasty, and some will also, depending on your growing climate, conditions, watering, all that, they can get up to 25 to 50 pounds per vegetable. So we're just going to plant it there, and these will sprawl all over this area and cover and as they grow they'll cover the, the soil and actually help retain moisture in the soil. These dumpling squash is a high yield producing squash and they only get about seven ounces kind of like similar to a patty pan but very sweet and delectable so we're going to plant these all together and they'll work with each other they're not going to hurt anything to be planted. I may be planting these just a little on the close order but with limited space I'm willing to take that chance and if we keep the water to them there should be not a whole lot of issue with the capabilities of how they grow. So I've got green Hubbard dumpling, green Hubbard and then a winter dumpling squash. 
So we're gonna plant our confection winter squash. Now we're using a trellis here that was the side of a dog kennel. Cleaned it up, works very well. So we're just gonna plant these guys. And now these will take a hundred and, uh, these will take 95 days to grow. They're gonna be gray in color, about three to five pounds. They store quite well. So it's uh, gonna be a good winter squash that you can bake with. We've got three that we started from seed. And we're just gonna put three here. Now this will be the first year that we've grown these. So we're eager to see how well they produce. And with any squash or any vegetable that is, you wanna keep a lot of water to them. Keep as much sunlight to them as they possibly can. And you'll have a good yield come this fall. Using the bottom string of a baby crib is just one of the ways you could trellis your squash if space is limited. Another way is you could use the high tensile nylon trellis that you can purchase at your local home and garden center, like John Colder from GrowingYourGreens.com does. And to see that video, it'll be in our show notes, and you can find all that information on our website, TheWisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Collecting blue canning jars can be a fun activity. We've displayed ours that we've purchased at yard sales and on websites like craigslist.org in combination with the clear canning jars that we use every day on this nice shelf that somebody was kind enough to throw in the junk. Now there's a couple of things you should know about your blue canning jar. How much are they worth? Well, it really depends on how much you're willing to pay for them and how much somebody's willing to pay you. The more valuable canning jars are the purple, brown, and lime green ones of years earlier than when the blue canning jar was made. The blue canning jar was made in the late 1890s and was discontinued in 1937. And the color was derived from the minerals in the sand that came off the shores of Lake Michigan and the amount of oxygen that the glass makers introduced into the furnace during the glass making process. If you can get the glass, if you can get the blue canning jars with the zinc lids, it would be more of a complete package. Now they do remanufacture the zinc lids, but the originals are just as good. Also, to help identify what year that blue canning jar was made in that span, you can tell by the font. Some have underlined, some font is tilted, and some different ways it is written on the jar. Also, on the bottom of each jar, there is a number that indicates the amount of jars that were made during that work shift. The employee would write on the bottom, and at the end of the shift, the employer would pay them for the amount of jars that they made. The, the rumor that the number 13 jar is rare because moonshiners would disregard and break those jars and not use them during, during the running of moonshine is simply not true. Though those jars are harder to find, they're not scarce by any means. To, for, for more information to find out what your, your blue can jar may be, we'll have a link for that on our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. And you can also use your blue jar as decorative as we have when we put our unity sand in it during our wedding. A watermelon is a refreshing treat to have on a hot summer afternoon. But after you've eaten that watermelon, don't throw that rind in the compost pen just yet. There's a lot of things you can do with it. You can do everything from making watermelon rind honey to watermelon rind pie and dozens of other things. And all that can be found on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna juice some watermelon rind. It's a refreshing beverage that the whole family can enjoy. So what you wanna do is you wanna get as much as the red flesh off the rind as you possibly can. And you can peel the, you peel the watermelon with a peeler or you can cut it off. Then you wanna take your juicer and you wanna juice it and collect it all in a uh, container. Now watermelon rind has more nutritional value than the actual watermelon itself. It's high in beta carotenes and vitamin C and a lot of other nutritional value to it. So once you've juiced it, you, can, you want to take some sparkling water. This is strawberry flavor. And you can take and you store it in your container for a couple days. 
and you'll just want to take a quarter of your glass full of the sparkling water. And then you want to fill the rest of it with the watermelon rind. And it's a nutritional treat that the whole family can enjoy. And you can chill this, and you can add other fruits and, uh, fruits and vegetables to it if you wanted to throw a little cucumber or strawberry in it. And it's very good, and it's great for everybody to enjoy. By now you probably have a lot of lettuce and spinach coming out of your garden or you're about to. So I'm going to show you a quick, easy salad dressing that you can make using items that you probably probably already have around your house. So I like to mix my salad dressings in a mason jar. One, because you can measure with them. And two, um, because I like to use it, put the lid on, shake it up and it helps combine it and then also gives me the same container for storage later. So I put about a quarter cup of lemon juice in here. I squeezed two lemons, medium sized lemons, and that gave me a quarter cup of lemon juice. And then I'm just gonna add enough oil to give it about three quarters to a quarter of a cup. So I'm just go ahead and add that. And you wanna use olive oil, that's preferable. And we'll go about, go about three quarters of a cup if you want to add more oil that's to your taste along with any of these um, spices if you want to add more feel free to go ahead so then I add just a heaping teaspoon a tablespoon of grated Parmesan cheese then I'm gonna go ahead and add a quarter teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of ground pepper And then I add a tablespoon of garlic powder. You can use fresh garlic or granulated garlic, whatever kind of garlic you want. But I would just use the powder kind, don't use the garlic salt. All right. technical difficulties here okay so now what you want to do is you want to put your lid on I use these freezer lids for when I'm making the salad dressings and you just go ahead give it a really good shake make sure the lids on nice and tight and then when you're ready to serve it you can obviously shake it up as you go along so there you have it a nice easy refreshing lemony salad dressing that you can make at home for all the lettuce and spinach you're hopefully getting out of your garden. As the days get warmer, you're going to have to water your container plants more often due to the evaporation. Well, one of the ways you can combat that is by putting something on the soil. Now, we've got a few options that you already have in your house that will actually help this. With our container tomato plant, we've watered it heavily, and what you can do is take an old stock, preferably one that doesn't have holes in it, and fill it halfway full with sand. And then you're just gonna lay it on top of the soil, all the way around, and lifting, and you can set it in there, you will need two socks for this, and the sun will hit the sand, not the soil, and it'll actually hold, hold the moisture into the pot longer, and you can just water right through this. Now another option you would have is if you had this like we have here, we've got our bush beans in this pot. We've taken a kitchen towel and wrapped it with shredded paper and we've watered directly through it. And it's been several days of sitting in the hot 90 degree temperatures here in Wisconsin. But as you can see, there's still moisture in the soil. So that is a viable option as well. Now this will only work on single stemmed plants like peppers, eggplants, these bush beans here. Something like the Swiss chard where you have multiple plants in a container, it's not going to work as well and you're going to have to water them as you normally do. Another way you can combat this is on our larger container tomato plants. You can take what we have here, it is the top of an umbrella that you would have on your porch. So we 
cut a portion that would cover the top of the plant here for our tomatoes. And then we cut down a slit here to where it will slide around the stems. We also put two holes for if it rains and also easier for us to water when the time comes. So all we're gonna do is remove the hanging portion on the pot here. Now, if you don't have a hanging bracket on your container, you can always use closed pins or you can make your cloth extra large and wrap a string around the base or wrap a string on the top lip of your container to hold it down. So we're going to take the cloth and gently tuck it around the stem. We're going to hide some of them just like this and you'll have to tinker with it depending on the size of your pot. So now that we've got that put together there, we can take our clips and begin to attach it back onto the pot. With this being right there, we're gonna pull it tight, tuck our tomato plant back up in its upright position, and we'll take this one and snap here. We're gonna take this guy and we're just gonna feed it right back as it was growing. And that way, it, the sun will hit the umbrella portion or the fabric and it won't dry the soil out nearly as quickly. And with the holes here, if it rains or we need the water and we can check the moisture level as well. So a couple of ways to help you water less and keep more moisture in the soil and your plants happier. Well, that's all the time we have. Hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Just watering in our winter squash, and then we're going to put a little shredded paper around it, and then water that in to hold it all together. Try to hold as much moisture in the soil as we possibly can. And that watermelon rind, not just for using it in the compost bin, but juicing it for a relaxing, enjoyable drink that the whole family can enjoy. For all of us here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, I'm Joy Baird, encouraging you, take a child garden and start growing some memories. Thank you again for watching our show. And I just want to let you know that we really do appreciate you watching from week to week. I want to inform you of some updates that Joy and I have decided on in the programming. Going forward now, indefinitely every second Tuesday of the month we're going to continue with the formatting of having a half an hour show every all the rest of the Tuesdays of the month we're going to do a one or two subject extra like you've seen in the past most recently we had the milk crate planting we're going to go forward and go ahead with those for the for the rest of the month and we'll have those out every Tuesday we encourage you to follow us on YouTube like you have been Check us out on Facebook and our website, which is the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. And there you can find links and you can also find where you can sign up for our weekly emails. The reason why we're doing this is just because we're simply getting overwhelmed. The combination of us, and we don't get paid for this, so we shoot, edit, plan, all of that information every week for you, which we do enjoy doing, but at this point taking care of the garden and with it being summer, it's just something that, that we, cannot, we cannot do at this time. So we appreciate you watching and we do encourage you to continue following us. And if you have any suggestions of a topic that you would like us to cover, whether it be about growing, pulling weeds, for the home, reusing, anything like that, please do approach us in any of those ways. And we do encourage you to send us an email and we will go ahead and, and consider it for the show and, and take care of that for you. So please, we appreciate you watching. Happy planting. The show never ends on our Facebook page, keyword Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the W-I Veg Gardener at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show. This program was funded by the following. 
at dollarseed.com. All of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. Dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Willow Spring Soap Company is a locally owned Colorado business just a stone's throw away from the Rocky Mountains. Their handmade soap is made from simple, recognizable ingredients, which lead to a more natural, earth-friendly, long-lasting, and hard bar with a wonderful creamy lather. They make soap using the cold kettle process with a specially formulated recipe of 100% vegetable oils. They use traditional methods that produce a true soap instead of the commercial synthetic alternatives that can dry out skin. Go to www.willowspringsoap.com to get a fresh and natural clean handmade in the Rockies. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener supports the following. Hunger Task Force believes that every person has the right to adequate food obtained with dignity. They're providing food for people in need. With their 151-acre working farm and fish hatchery in Franklin, Wisconsin, volunteers are needed daily. You could plant seeds in the greenhouse, ride the transplanter, or you can make an instant $10 donation from your mobile device by texting FOOD to 52000. For more information on how you can help in hunger, visit HungerTaskForce.org.